Okay, go ahead. Welcome to episode 74 of Auto Off Topic. What's up, Brad? Not much. What's up, Andrew? Not too much. A little early spring thaw, just to be ended by snow on Saturday night. I don't think that much, though. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think we're over the hump. It's a bold move saying that on February 15th. I think we're getting there. Well, I did notice there's no salt in the roads because it's been raining. Yeah. So I was thinking that tomorrow I might take my car for a drive. I feel like one more rainstorm would have to do it. You think so? There's some salt some places. Well, I'll take a look in the morning. We'll just make a decision. Game time decision. Yeah, but... Just need like a de-stressor for the winter, you know? We're... I mean, we're getting there. It definitely felt like a spring day. It's lighter out in the morning. It's lighter out at night. Yeah, it's true. So... And it was like 50 degrees out today, too. So. Yes, that also helped. So for the first time in a while, we're talking about good weather on the Auto Off Topic podcast. Mm-hmm. I uh, I got some Teespring shirts. You ordered some of those shirts, yes? Yeah. Uh, I'm not too happy with the ones I got. Well, so if, they're if not you, bad. They're not bad. The, the quality is fine, but they're not consistent. Consistent quality? Well, the size you're talking the about. The size. Yeah, well. So it's kind of weird. But if you bought one... You probably didn't notice it, but I bought four, and our logo in the middle is a different size on, on each one of them. four of them, yeah, it's kind of bizarre. It's, it's super a, weird. It varies a lot, too. Like, like a huge variation. Yeah. Like, one's like six inches by six inches, and the other ones are like three by three and three by point two five by three point two five. It's weird. And I don't know why, because I set it up with one t-shirt in mine, and then just picked different colors to have it offered in. Correct. It's very strange. So they'll be hearing from the legal department. The Ottawa Topic Legal Department? Yes. Let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll have to email them and, and figure out what's up with that. It's Andrew weird. J. Pescarella, Esquire, at your service. Yeah. I'm an <laughs> attorney at Bird Law. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I don't think anybody's going to complain about it if they ordered one shirt because they look fine. Yeah. and The mugs look great. Comparing them. The mugs are awesome. But I should have ordered a mug. I didn't order a mug. That's all right. I still can, but... Um, yeah, I mean, we'll still use the shirts, but it's kind of yeah, weird. Whatever. Maybe I can get my money back from myself. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't do that because... Well, I want to figure out why they're inconsistent. Yes, that's a better idea. Not like get your money back. Yeah. Because then, yeah. Then you're just a cheap prick that made everybody listen to us <laughs> buy t-shirts and you get four freebies. Not cool, man. Hmm. So um, what's going on in our lives, Project Car Wise? Anything good going on in your life, Project Car Wise? Uh, well... The WRX got new depot headlights. Courtesy oh, of I thought you work. polished them. No. Oh, I okay. polished them before, and they're just beyond the point of polishing them. Okay. Well, the problem with polishing is you remove the UV coating anyway. The UV coating was probably long gone because I'm sure right. it wears off. But then when you polish them, it doesn't last very long. No. And even if you reapply it, I've still had ones like Stephanie's old Outback did it two or three times. Yeah. And they would yellow again. Because mm-hmm. you can't quite get the pitting out because you can't sand them that much. Right. Because it's just plastic. Well, you have to sand them and clear coat them. I think they have to do it if we want to do it right, I think. Yeah. But that amount of effort, I had the headlights swapped. So, I mean, more money out, out front, but they did come with new bulbs in them. And one of the bulbs had burnt out. Oh. And uh, we needed a video for it and a couple other reasons, uh, explanations on why you should just replace them. And so you did it. Yep. So I did it. So did it make a big difference at nighttime? Oh, yeah. And the car looks like nearly new. I should probably get it for my truck too. Yes. Yeah. They're probably really inexpensive my for your truck. Are pretty deplorable. Um, because they make like a and they're super easy to change on yours. They're like those weird L nail things. Yeah, the plastic brackets that go in the back. They slide out. Yeah, it's like a metal. It looks like a nail that somebody bent into an L, and you flip it over, and then the headlight like falls Lists out. Straight out. Yeah. It's crazy easy. Yep. I'll say you change the bulbs. So. Which mine the bumper didn't have to come off, which was cool. No, the early the old, those ones don't. The later model um, legacies and legacy outbacks. almost everything now the bumper has to come out. No, not everything, but a lot of cars. A lot of stuff. Yeah. So a lot of cars have now integrated the front bumper retainer with the headlight retainer mm-hmm. to save money. Yeah, but it just makes it more difficult. And for them. if you've got xenons, it I don't think do people steal xenon still? Not really a thing anymore. Yeah, because you can buy aftermarket xenon kits now on eBay for like twenty nine ninety five. Yeah. I know it was so. it was kind of done to like tie them in. Make them hard to steal. But, uh, yeah, it was then, a common problem with the old B5 Audis and the Mendy Sam Maximus. Oh, yeah. And then um, it's got a wicked bad misfire. 
Like just your car does still. I haven't I haven't done anything with two no. yet. I've I talked to you about we didn't talk about this last week because we had Jim on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I haven't changed the parts yet. I'm still waiting for the plugs to get here. Okay. Um, it, which apparently I talked to the old owner. They were they're like thirty thousand miles, and you do them every thirty. So maybe it's time. It's, I ho- I hope that's what it is because it ran really good for like a long time until mm-hmm. two weeks ago, and then on the mm-hmm. highway you just dip into boost and it sputters and misfires. That's weird. But if you gradually build it up and not get too heavy into it, it's okay. So it sounds about like a fuel issue to me. No. No. It and the check engine light like, fuel pump? No. It would just die. Slowly clogging fuel filter? I can change that too. I don't yeah. know. I have to ask him. Because if you just if you just jump into boost real fast, that's not getting enough fuel to support the boost, it's gonna act like a misfire, right? Yeah, but the timing is not being retarded. Just the driver. <sighs> Sorry. The um <laughs> It's, but the check engine light flashes a bunch of times, which apparently is a really bad misfire. Okay. So, I also have an uh, idle speed valve gasket because apparently those need to be cleaned every now and then. Okay. I went to get on one highway to another highway, and I pushed the clutch in to shift, and the car just stalled. That's a that's annoying. That's super annoying. Yeah. I just fired it right back up. It was fine, but the idle didn't seem that bad. But apparently, it will just all of a sudden just get real bad if they get gummed up mm-hmm. and it's got high mileage. It's got about the right amount of mileage and there's some good threads on Nasioc and how to change it. Oh, the internet forums. And well, luckily this one, somebody fixed all the links. Oh, so the, it, it wasn't it was links. It wasn't ruined by photo bucket. Uh, and then that brings me into, I bought for specifically for the job because I'd heard about these only a short time ago because whenever we work on Japanese stuff, the Phillips head screws always seem to turn to cheese. Yeah, they strip right out. As soon as you touch them. I'd heard about it before and then just forgot about it. Yeah. Especially interior trim pieces on Mitsubishi's. Any Japanese car I've found. The worst. There, are, there is a standard called JAS, which is Japanese Industrial Standard. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the taper of the Phillips head or cross point, because technically it's not a Phillips, it's a cross point, right. is slightly different. It's not designed to cam out like a Phillips head is. Okay. And apparently it doesn't strip these Japanese car screws. Hmm. And you really need them for, like, Japanese motorcycles, too, I guess. Okay. That would make sense because every every screw head on my Japanese motorcycle is stripped. Yes. From well before I owned it. Yeah, so, so I bought some off of Amazon. They're funny because the brand is Vessel Megadora. Like, it has some funny, like... Japanese English translation. Yeah, I only got one so far. The other one I'm waiting for is an actual impact driver and then a regular one. And then this one has the six point on it that you can turn. So you turn with a wrench. Yeah, if you need, it's really tight. It says, least cam out, grip the screw. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's got little jaws on the teeth. But it's a Vessel Megadora 980. Whatever it's a ridiculous means. name. Yeah. It's got a nice handle. It's super heavy. So. It's very heavy. Yeah, it's got a, a metal end on it. So you can, like you said, you can. You can tap. You can tap, tap this one. Yeah. yeah. But the other one, you can actually tap, and it'll turn. It'll be an impact driver or whatever impact. Sweet remover. So that's kind of neat. Um, I think that's it for the WRX. It's generally be running okay. Mm-hmm. I well, did, I did sound like it's running okay to me. Well, it's, it's bad. So- misfired. It's stalling on the highway, but. Yeah, Fine. Well, the EVAP code I've been chasing. I did order oh, the... Oh, and the EVAP code. I did order the solenoid valve. I found it for like half price. Uh, I'm waiting for that to get here. I'm going to try to replace that first. I really should just have it smoke tested and quit screwing around with it. Um, did you already do the filler neck? Nope. Okay. I figured I'd try... A lot of people, again, on the forums, it's pretty common. This piece is plastic. It gets old. And brittle and breaks, even with vibration from the engine. Oh, we're in New England, so even metal parts get old and brittle and break. So, Well, yeah, it's the, the plastic part off the solenoid valve. Okay. And also, I was going to replace, I've got some silicone vacuum hose. I was going to replace that, too. It Sweet. goes to it. It lasts forever. So we'll see. Most excellent. But for the majority of the time, the last two weeks, we've been helping out with the... I do have one quick project card. What do you got? my end, I put tires on my truck. All right. That's all. Moving on. Cool. Because <laughs> we'll get there. You need tires. 
Right, but I don't think we're using it for that purpose. Maybe. So, not sure. We'll see. Well, anyways, you're t- you're taking it this weekend. Yes. Yeah, so we are full of parts at the very least. Yeah. So this weekend, as far as events go, if you're in New England and you want to spectate a rally sprint, there is one at the Tim O'Neill School on Sunday, yes. February 18th. Dalton, New Hampshire. Dalton, New Hampshire. About two and a half, three hours north of Boston. Yes. Uh, so the last two weeks, we have been attempting our best to help Jordan and Liz with their spaghetti rally car. Almost every night. It's been about as useful as trying to like pick up spaghetti with like a spoon or something trying to it's been <laughs> more awful. annoying i don't know it's been awful but uh i think useless is not the word annoying is definitely the word difficult yeah. it's been as difficult as it's been as difficult as picking up spaghetti with a spoon to figure out what's going on with this car they were resurrecting a car that hadn't been driven in quite a long time or rallied so it needed a lot of little things much love much love um but that's old car life Especially old car that's been sitting for over a decade life. Yeah. Because seals dry out, things go bad, and then you start chasing weird things over and over and over again. I don't know, even know where we... Um, I don't even know where the last time we talked about it. I we'll have last, them on again. I think the last time we talked about it, we can talk about it a little bit about yeah. them, because I think when they're on, we'll talk more about the actual yeah. event. Yeah. Um, I think last time we talked I about it, we were r- finishing up the wiring. You just finished with the wiring under the hood. Oh, that's and right. You had fixed the. You made a new like uh, fuse block for the lights and all the. Oh, that's right. Things I haven't talked about that yet. Car. I had it all wrapped up. Yes. And while I was doing that, Jordan was working on the braking system. Yes. In the back of the car, Jordan was braking the brakes. Yeah, because <laughs> the rear brakes were seized. Uh, so he replaced all those. And then they wouldn't bleed the night before the two-day rally cross in Stafford Springs that they were going to go to to shake the car down. Here's the problem with that. We didn't realize that they wouldn't bleed. We weren't sure what the problem was. All we knew is we had no pedal. Yeah. So this was the night before the rally cross. It was a Friday night. Um, I I live about an hour away from Jordan, maybe about 45 minutes to an hour away from Jordan. And at 9.30 on a Friday night, I was like, all right, I'm on my way. We'll see if we can get the thing figured out. And uh, we oh. established, yes, wind blowing through the house. Sorry. Uh, excuse me, wind blowing through the podcast studio. No, it's a uh, it's a semi-stopping. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Can't nearly hear these headphones on, so I'll stick to my story. I thought it was a dog yelping. That's what I thought at first, too. I looked to the left at Enzo's down here with us, and I didn't bring all of tonight, so. Yeah. Knew it was one of ours, but anyway, um, so I went up there and we bled the brakes a, a couple more times and looked at every, you know, obvious failure point on a braking system that you can see. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was no fluid being pushed through the front calipers and the pedal was going to the floor. So we surmised at that point that the master cylinder had gone bad mm-hmm. and it wasn't pushing fluid to the front of the car. And that obviously was creating air and creating other issues. And there was not a pedal because the master cylinder was gone. We figured the booster was fine because he had, when a booster goes bad, you have a hard pedal because you basically have manual brakes. So the only thing that wasn't replaced at that point had been, we thought, the master cylinder because there were new calipers in the rear. We saw the calipers in the front. We knew they weren't leaking. We also knew they weren't really working, but they were there. So we ordered a new master cylinder. Step number one. Mm -hmm. Step number two was leave the house and go out and get beers. Yep. After that, um, the following day, the Saturday, rather than go to the rally, they decided they would try to change the master cylinder and go to the second day of the rally on Sunday. Mm-hmm. It didn't work. Nope. Fast forward to Sunday. They towed the car that Sunday or the week after? Uh, it was that day. Saturday, I think. Following Saturday? No. That's oh, that Saturday. Saturday night. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it was that Saturday. So Saturday night. That's garage for two yeah. weeks. So Saturday night, we towed the car down to Salem where we have... More access to tools and a lift and more space to work on the car. And my dad. And your dad, who is a, you know, master mechanic. So I have his input, which is obviously much appreciated to have, you know, somebody who has that much knowledge not charging us to help us fix things. Well, the <laughs> front brakes were eventually seized, so they just replaced them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we replaced all of the hard brake lines, yep. except for the two in the car. And the brake hoses. And the brake hoses. Yep. Uh, all four new calipers, mm-hmm. new brake pads, mm-hmm. new master cylinder, mm-hmm. and the pedal went to the floor. Yep. 
Sweet. So we it turns fancy bleeding tools that like reverse bleed it from the caliper up to the master cylinder. Still wouldn't bleed. No. So failure point on us at this point. This car is a mishmash of parts. Yes. So it has uh, Volkswagen Mark III rear brakes. It had. It had Volkswagen Mark III rear brakes. But the problem was was that the bleeder screw wasn't high enough on the caliper. Yeah, the way they were mounted. The way they were mounted for the air to bleed through the system properly. So once we established it's that. Super hard to spot because it was almost in the middle of the caliper. Yep. Like towards the top. So yep. you wouldn't, if you just looked at it real quick, you're like, no, that's, that's high enough. Right. But not high enough. So once we figured that out, we decided to go with the correct Volkswagen Mark II um, GTI 8-valve calipers mm-hmm. um, and still wouldn't bleed. <laughs> nope. Now, at this point, I think the problem was we had tried so many different things that we had just allowed so much air into the system that it didn't matter how, you know, it was just a lot of work to try to bleed all the air out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, we'd cracked the system open so many times. We tried to bleed it so many times. We'd pushed air in it from the, you know, reverse bleeding system to the forward bleeding system and all that, you know, baloney we tried over these whole two weeks. At this point, we'd already, they say, already replaced all the hard lines, yeah. already replaced all the hoses. Yeah. We had a, a weird, this weird uh, proportioning valve on the rear beam of a Volkswagen we were playing with. Now, a normal car that hadn't had the lines all messed with and run inside the car and, like, looped in weird ways... Mm-hmm. You could pretty much open the bleeders and the calipers, and let it, sit. and it would gravity bleed. Yeah, like that's the way a system should work. Right, but this one just was this being totally a weird. Cobbled together race car. Yeah, does not work that way. Yeah. So eventually, we got that tool that I wasn't present for this part. So I'll let you power bleeder on it. Power bleeder that bleeds it from the master. Yeah, you cylinder. pressurize the master cylinder with like ten psi, mm-hmm. and then we cracked the farthest caliper, so Which the passenger the side rear. rear. Yep. That was where the most air came out of it. Okay. We did that twice, and nothing came out in the second try. Like, no bubbles. It wasn't a lot, but it was enough. Because mm-hmm. air can be compressed, but mm-hmm. fluid cannot. Cannot. So, That's why it works. And then the pedal stayed hard. So, we're they're going to run it. Yeah. Oh, but we also did get other stuff done. Yeah, while, while they there? were messing with the brakes, we did... Uh, we helped them with the hatch, the hatch tie downs. The uh, uh, LED plate lights plate work lights. now. Uh, what else? There's a couple little things. Oh, we mounted the fire extinguishers. Put some auto off topic stickers on it. We did. That was very, auto- three, that was very important. Three auto off topic stickers to that <laughs> clearly made it run better. But yeah, well, it was after it was, it was after the stickers went on and the brakes were fixed. Well, after <laughs> doesn't matter how far after it wasn't until after. Um, what else did we do with it? I feel like we did more things that we're not, we're not listening right now. I, I can't remember. We'll, yeah. we're, we're going to have them on. Yeah. And we'll talk more about the car and we'll talk about the actual event because yeah. it's happening in two days, three days. So two and, days, uh, two everybody's days. kind of tired of working on it. So hopefully it is just successful all weekend. Yeah. We've got a bunch of other friends that are coming up. We're just going to crew for it. We've got our planned out what we need. Tarps, jacks. Yep. We'll jack it up after each run and clean it out and get all the rocks out of it. And Shouldn't they, be any rocks. It's any ice rocks up there. Straight up ice after the video they posted yesterday. Yeah, if you go to the Team O'Neill Facebook page. It's and actually Instagram. on our Facebook page. Oh, you shared it? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, the, that's their north. That's the top. So you, you basically race. It's a hill climb, pretty much. That you come back down from. No, you don't race downhill. They oh, transit okay. down. You just, they just race one way. Um, they are running uh, Nokian Nordman studded tires. Mm-hmm. So they at least have studs. They don't have the WRC style studs, but they have studs. No, because they don't have all the money in the world to spend on these. No. <laughs> Cheap and the car has a hundred horsepower, so the regular studs will probably, probably be, fine. be okay yeah. if it has a hundred horsepower. Probably not. No, nope, but right. it, it doesn't matter. It, it's a worn out eight valve. It does not have a hundred horsepower. It's fine. It'll be. It. It's you know great, what? It, it's a great learning car. It, it gets you out there. One hundred percent. So they've done what we've always talked about doing and have never done. So <laughs> jumped more, right in. More power to them. Um. So yeah, that's. Yet somehow we're still involved. We can have any fun. We should get to work on the car. That's Hell, fun. Man. I don't know. It's fun to me. No, I know it's fun. I'm just being sarcastic. Uh, how's the uh, Gallant coming? Uh, well, all the parts are back. Yep, from the machine shop. 
You know, the head's all cleaned up. Head's it cleaned was up. Straight. Block cleaned up. Block was clean and straight. It's nice. Yep. Everything's just crank cleaned up really nice. Yep. Everything's just sitting in wait. My dad built a storage box for it. I, he did. He did. So it doesn't get damaged while we're waiting. Yes, he made a, a storage box for the, for the crank that fits it perfectly. Um, that's what he does. So that's our Tony. Um, waiting on me to scrape together a couple extra boxes because I need to buy bearings for the crank and the pistons and, and rings and what else do I need? No, the pistons were fine. No, not pistons. Uh, bearings for the well, crank bearings in the yeah. in the in the rods, yeah. rod bearings, crank bearings, yeah, um, and rings. Mm-hmm. So I need to go through my gaskets that I have. I think I have a full gasket set. I also need to find the balance shaft. I have the main balance shaft, but I need the one that comes off the back of the oil pump. Mm-hmm. The one that gets replaced when you with the, with the block off plate when you do the, the little stubby shaft, the, the balance shaft elimination kit. So I'd like to put a balance shaft back in the car because it's pretty much a stock. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, well, everything we've been reading about there's it. There's new uh, consensus that it's fine. It's good to have. And the most important thing I was reading about it was the vibration that is taken away by the balance shaft helps the transmission shift smoother, which to me is more important than anything there's else no in one of these cars. There's no way. It doesn't matter. Even if you race blueprinted and balanced this engine... You right. cannot eliminate the secondary forces. Yeah, the inherent unbalance of a four cylinder. You engine. cannot eliminate yeah. it, and the balance shafts mitigate it, but they don't eliminate it. So, and that's and it also having the balance shaft attached to the oil pump gives it extra support. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there are positives to it. Yeah, and like I said, the, have, have, the big the big positive that I took out of reading all the stuff that I read was that it, it makes the car easier to shift because the transmission is not vibrating. And making the synchros not align up properly. So the car... Both my cars have them in it. And they both run fine. And they both shift like butter. Yeah. So they both shift way nicer than that transmission should. Yeah. And it's probably because everybody's used to driving that transmission in a car without balance shafts. Yeah. So I just want to make an enjoyable, drivable car. I don't want to... It's not a race car. It's not anything fancy. It's just going to be a nice driver. I mean, backyard engineering, I understand why people thought... You should remove. I'm old school guys hey, still less, want to remove them. Less rotating mass is less weight is more horsepower. Right. Less rotating mass is less complication is less things to break. But I think properly maintained. I, I don't good think you can out, out engineer them though. So personally, that's my feeling. No, I know that I don't have the education the guy that designed the thing has. So yeah, I'll let him. I'll let him win this. I one. will always argue for them. Unpopular opinion. Hot take. I, I think it's become more popular. I really think it has because you don't see a lot of the non Mitsubishi guys doing it in their four cylinders that have balance shafts. Mm-hmm. Because balance shafts have been introduced to a lot of other vehicles by this point. Yeah, notably like the 2.5 in a Porsche 944 because they licensed it from Mitsubishi. Actually, mm-hmm. um, and you don't see a lot of Porsche guys doing a balance shaft elimination. So mm-hmm. I'll live with them. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, probably better than fine. Probably factory perfect. Yep. And again, the car will shift, which is the most important thing to me yep. in any kind of car because it's one of the most noticeable things in a car is how the car shifts. And if it's annoying to shift the car, it's going to be annoying to drive the car. I know. I really want to drive my Galant right now, but a couple more weeks. Yeah. We're getting there. Uh, we also got some scan gauges. Yes. From the Linear Logic company that yes. sells scan gauge. Yep. To uh, review them for them and uh, their give scan our gauge thoughts. twos. Yeah. yeah. Did you put yours in yet? I did. It's in the truck right now. Cool. It's uh, it's interesting. It's super easy to install. Like crazy easy Literally, to you just plug it in. Yep. And it does everything you automatically. Select a couple of things, engine size, blah, 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 fuel mm-hmm. tank size. I haven't set up the trip yet. I did go to the gas station, but I wasn't ready to set it up. Yeah. I just I calculate my fuel mileage. I just plugged it in the day before yesterday. So I haven't actually officially set anything up as far as fuel mileage and stuff. So it shows like four miles to the gallon. <laughs> um, so I got to figure all that out. But automatically, without adjusting anything, it reads, you know, water temperature and fuel. Sorry, um, RPM and yep. a bunch of other things. And it also has a uh, code scanner built into it too, which is cool. Yep. So I can clear codes and read codes. And yep, I used it to clear my recurring EVAP code. Yep. And uh, also we'll check and. Set readiness, I think, as well, correct? It'll show readiness if it ever sets. Uh, That's another thing. I can't get the car to set readiness, and I hope it's because it 
misses the evap and then doesn't do the rest of the checks. All right. Uh, we'll see. But hopefully it helps me chase it down. Um, it does show boost and vacuum, which is neat. Mm -hmm. And it shows, uh, like I got mine set up to do water temp, uh, ignition timing. And mine doesn't do ignition timing. Because it's a diesel. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you can also get, it goes a level deeper. I haven't really gotten into it yet. You can get X gauges. You can go to their website and they have codes to put in to make it read other things that are vehicle specific. Okay. So I got to look up some, see if it maybe has like a knock gauge that might okay. be interesting. I haven't looked too much into it. I've just been using it like kind of yeah, trying it out. Yeah, I've been playing with it a little bit. So I'll, just, I'll set it up. Maybe I'll set it up before I do the long haul this weekend. Yeah. I kind of thought they were always like, kind of black magic-y things, but it's pretty neat. I, yeah. I'm going no, to turn it's around not, to it's it. Not, it's definitely not gimmicky at all. No. It shows you things that are essential to the car that you may or may not have enough gauge for. I mean, it's not every car has got a water temperature gauge. No. Some just have an idiot light. So it's mm -hmm. nice to have this plug-and-play solution to have Plus a water Plus, you can verify gauge. your water temperature gauge. Yeah. I mean, I assume they're getting the same signal, but... Yeah, we'll make sure the gauge is working. Yeah, your cluster could be bad. Mm -hmm. That's too. Um... This, oh, there's some redundancy, but there's going to be some redundancy in something that is built to read everything. Yeah. So it's going to be certain things are going to be useful to you and certain things are going to not be useful to the you. The trip thing's neat. I haven't tried that yet. Because it'll do like trip. It'll do like time. You can calibrate it to speed. Okay. It'll do like time distance too. So you can use it for a TSD rally. Yeah, yeah, equipped. So yeah. that's pretty neat. I yeah, like it so it's far. A, it's, a, it's a neat little device. And uh, I like that it's... Infinitely portable. Oh yeah, you can take it out of the car. Uh, I'll definitely do it on the car with an OBD in it. Yeah, I'll definitely use it in the Montero mm -hmm. because that would have been handy when it broke because mm -hmm. I would have been able to pull the code that you told me it. it was a crank position sensor yep. or a cam position sensor, <clears throat> and I probably could have slid one in there and then limped it home. Probably not. No, you can do the, the cam position sensor without taking anything apart. Oh, can you? Yeah, that's why we take it all apart then. Because, because the shutter wheel, the shutter wheel, the shutter wheel was bent. Yeah, that's that's right. what I mean. I could have put a, one in there and just limped it home and then changed it again. Went down the line, yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever. It's done is done. Yep. Anything else? Uh, as far as project cars go? I think that's it. I think that's it. Project cars. Scale project cars. A couple things. Yeah. I touched on them real quick last week, and I meant to go home and grab something to show them to you, but I've picked up a couple. Glad of everybody ones. liked... The Hot Wheels episode. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It's been our most, like, listener response episode A lot of ever. people are into Hot Wheels. I'll, is it like, I, I think it's almost like we validated people who are into them. <laughs> They're like, oh, other people really and, are into this. And Jim was a great guest. So Yeah, uh, no, Jim was a great guest, yeah. There'll be, in the future, there'll definitely be an, a, a few more I'll Hot follow Wheels up centric. With, I think we're definitely going to do one specifically on Hot Wheels this year later on. Yes. Possibly with Jim, because this year is the 50th anniversary of Hot Wheels cars. Yes. And it'd be cool to kind of delve a little more into the history yeah. of where they came from versus yeah. just the collection of. I them. don't want to give you a back-to-back -back Hot Wheels now. So. No, we got to move on a little bit. Uh, I do want to talk about the Tarmac work, Tarmac mm -hmm. Works cars, and I keep teasing that I'll put pictures up, but I haven't yet because I haven't sat down and take good pictures of them yet. And I've gotten a few more of them now. Why don't you do that when you after you leave here? Uh, that's a good idea. Maybe I will. Once I get all my other stuff done, um, I've gotten a few more of them now. I have a, a Tarmac Works one sixty fourth scale die cast which is essentially hot wheel size but they're a little smaller because they're actually true to scale not true to the three inch package size mm -hmm. um and they're super ultra detailed um i so far i've picked up the evo that was on last week's header image mm -hmm. the black one uh an eg civic race car Ooh. um and an e30 race car cool uh which is at the jägermeister you know dtm livery Jager bombs. yeah Jager bombs. They're amazing, and I, I like. I can't specify enough how cool they are. So, people should. It's hard to talk about them without having one in front of me. But right now is definitely a cool time to be a one sixty fourth scale collector because those cars are out. Um, and coming soon, there's another line of one sixty fourth scale called Mini GT. Wait, the that Jaeger car you sent me was one sixty fourth. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. It's tiny. It's a Hot Wheels car. Wait, because the Evo is 143rd, right? No, it's 164th. It's one of big. Yeah. Huh. It was right here in front of you. I thought it was 143rd for some reason. Nope. Nope. I, I didn't have anything next to it. Tarmac, so. work, Tarmac Works does 143rd cars. Yeah. Um, but 164th is really their, what they're known for. Hmm. They team up with another brand to do the 143rds. I forget what it is. 
Um, but there's another brand that does 143rds that is branching out into 164th this year. Yeah. Uh, TSM, True Scale Miniatures. Mm -hmm. They have a line they're calling Mini GT. Mm -hmm. And they're doing a bunch of cars this year from uh, 930 Porsches to 991 Porsches. Ooh. Um, they're doing. They're also doing the E30s. They're doing streetcar E30s. Mm -hmm. They're doing the new Ford GT. A couple of new race cars. Skyline GTRs, R32, R33, and the new ones. Neat. Um, so, and one of the coolest ones they're doing is they're doing uh, Defender, one, 110 wheelbase Defenders mm -hmm. and short wheelbase Defenders. Ooh. And they're releasing actual Camel Trophy trucks. Oh, cool. Which is really neat. I'll have to pick one of those up for sure. But you can definitely look those up on eBay. Uh, there is a U.S. seller for both of them. Um, his name is Surplus Goodies on eBay. And if you actually if you go to surplusgoodies.com, it links you to his eBay store. Oh, okay. So he's pretty good to deal with, and he combines shipping on them, so it makes it cheaper than buying them from um, Asia, where you used to have to get them from. So There's a couple uh, B-Max kits. Yep. That Aoshima ones. Aoshima B-Max. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that partnership works, but they're making some really, really cool kits. Yeah, stuff that has that never been releases. Yeah. Uh, I saw teasers of the Group B Audi Quattro, like the... Yep. The Dumb short wheelbase, yeah. wide car. Mm -hmm. um, out right now is they've got a BMW 2002 rally car. Nope. Oh, it's not, not out yet? Nope, but Tasagawa. Oh, the Tasagawa? Unrelated, yep, completely. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, that's a neat car. Yep. i got to pick that kid up mm -hmm. so I can put it on the shelf and not Never build it. Um, no, uh, Aoshima B-Max has the Volvo 240 race yes, cars. Yes, the Nordica car. Yep, there's a couple different, couple different liveries out okay. now. And there's actually... What else did they come out with then? They have the Nissan 240 RS rally car. The Group B car. Yep. They have... I have two of the Celica kits, and they're gorgeous. Yes. The, uh, G the ST-165s. Yeah. The, the early, early ones. ones. Um, they came out with... Uh, they're doing an EF Civic race car. Oh, that's right. I saw the teasers of yep. that. The mock-up. Um, actually, the kit's already out. Oh, is it? Yep. Oh, I they're remember it a while ago. doing then. a Toyota... I think it's called a Toyota Cerumo. It was a car they only sold overseas, but they made a touring car out of that, hmm. and they're selling that. Um, there's a bunch of cool ones coming out. I mean, yeah. they, they make some cool stuff, and I haven't bought any yet, but they're I nice. Certainly, I certainly will. I'll probably pick up the Volvo 240 kit, to be honest with mm -hmm. you, eventually. Probably the there's one that was run in some race in Macau. It's got kind of a cool livery. So, but anyway, yeah, those are scale, scale project car updates. I am uh, still trying to finish my Evo 8 kit. That's a replica of my old car, but time I'll get there. Yeah. I've been really considering uh, I should really take apart one of these Hot Wheels cars and paint it. Yes. I've been uh, distracted by Forza lately. Well, Forza and working on an actual rally car. Yeah. Um, I actually just picked up a Hot Wheels version of their car to build a copy of their rally car. With. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, Forza is like a good, I don't know, helps me turn my brain off. It's a good winter time car activity. It is. Yeah. Um, doesn't help me turn my brain off though, because I'm like a second slower a lap than you guys are at Lime Rock and it bothers me. Yes. Um, I don't know. We kind of, maybe we'll ask for feedback on that. Would anybody be interested in like a C-class time attack? Yeah. Auto, if auto, you've got time attack battle. If you've got Forza and you can, I don't know, send us a screen grab of your thing. C-class times. Your C-class times at yeah. Lime Rock. Yeah. Whatever you got. Run C class at Lime I've, Rock. Have you broke course? Did you break a minute in C class yet? Did I what? Have you bro broken a minute nope. in C class yet? So I'm real close. What are you at, at one minute point two? Something like that. And I'm at one minute point five. Yeah. So we can't break a minute. In a yeah, C Jordan's class not allowed for the contest, right? Because Jordan's at like he has a fifty eight point something. Yeah. In, yeah. At, He's yeah. associated with the podcast. So he's not allowed. Exactly. <laughs> Neither is anybody who's faster than Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't work that way. Uh, no, but seriously, we still we still have some cool prizes to give away too that we haven't given away yet, and uh, it'll be kind of cool to set that up. So if there's interest in it, maybe we'll set it up. Yeah, that It'll might be, be a fun, fun thing. So I bet there's a lot of crossover in people that listen to the show and have Forza. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun. Um, I'm the same thing on Forza, Race and Anger. I am not TSI SS. No, I'm not. No, I That's am. My, uh, yeah, uh, Brad Bomber five one eight. If anybody wants to. Race, race the auto lap topic hosts. Yep, Andrew is faster than me, but we both race clean. We're not jerks. So, my driver tar, I can't guarantee. I can't guarantee my driver tar is a nice guy because I drive like a jackhole when I'm driving in the single player game. Yeah, and I think that's what the driver tar is based off of. So my driver tar might be an ass. Yeah, but if you're actually racing against us in 
online races, then no, we're uh, we're a little more. Yeah, sedated. so that's fun. Um, I am writing for Gearbox Magazine now. It's excellent. I didn't think I even knew that. Yep, uh, it's very new. Yep. Uh, there's one thing posted up there. I get to do some other stuff. That's online uh, only at the moment. I think. Yep. Okay. Uh, working with Brian on that. He was a guest. Yeah, he was. Brian Driggs. Yeah, uh, six months ago. He also has a podcast, The Gearbox Project, mm-hmm. which uh, I'll have to double check with him. I'm not sure if it's submitted to iTunes yet. I know he's got four or five episodes ready to go. This week. Did you do it this week? I think so. I'll double check, but pretty sure. All right. So definitely search for that. He's got some great interviews. He interviewed um, um, Josh, Josh yep. from Adventure Driven Design, who was so also on here. Two of our past guests. Yes, <laughs> interviewed each other. Yes, um, but no, that I listened to that episode. Uh, it was excellent. So um, definitely, I think I was a little jealous because I think Brian got to the point with Josh that I wanted to get to that we didn't quite make it with our interview. But I haven't listened yet. But uh, it doesn't matter. It was it's really good, and it's. Um, I hope Brian goes far with it. So. Uh, and then and drags us right along with them. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, everybody helps each other. So that's how it works. That should be cool. Um, hmm. Anything else? Well, we have one more month until Southern New Hampshire Cars and Coffee comes back. Yep. So that's exciting. So I think they should be back in March. I was talking about that yesterday with the organiza- organizers. Mm-hmm. Um, are you out for Sebring, you think? No. Are you going away? No, I'm in. You're in for Sebring. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah, we're going to go to the Sebring we're 12 going to Sebring hour. this year, yeah. That's going to be fun. So, any of our Florida listeners, Frank Eck, I'm looking at you. Do I don't know, know where, I don't even know where Sebring is. I know it's in the middle of nowhere. It's not like Daytona. I don't know where it is either. It's not like Daytona. It's Frank, like a Frank city. if you're not close enough, it's cool, I understand. But yeah. we are coming down to hang out for a weekend. It's a narrow peninsula, but I think it's, well, I think it's, it's also hundreds in, of miles across. I think it's the middle of nowhere, though. Which is fine. Yeah. Uh, well, see, uh, it makes sense that it's middle of nowhere. It's a racetrack. Mm-hmm. Daytona doesn't make any sense. Sebring makes sense. No. So, yeah, I'll be going to Sebring this year. That should be a good time. I'm excited about that, actually. I should probably buy a ticket, huh? Yes. Have you bought a ticket yet? Uh, I'm doing that tomorrow. Okay. I'll do it tomorrow as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, that should be fun. Um, not much else. I think we'll we'll call this a, a short episode. Yeah, we'll keep a short episode because we're preparing we're gonna, for our big days this weekend. We're going to... Record a couple episodes up north up at the north. rally. Yeah, that'll be cool. At least one. I a, plan on a little exit interview for the driver and co-driver of the spaghetti yeah. rally car. So even though we we're giving a little short one here, I think we'll have a bonus episode. It's still next forty week. minutes. It's still yeah. pretty good. But yeah, there'll be at least one bonus episode next week, and we'll have many more guests in the works. Yes. So stay tuned. Um, and as always, if you like us. Please go on Facebook and click that like button and follow so you can see our post and you can see when we have questions. We haven't been doing questions every week or every other week. I think we decided we're going to do them once a month, which makes more sense for us, for our program. Um, We are also on iTunes, Google Play, uh, Stitcher. Of course, you can listen to us right on Shout Engine. Uh, I just got word that we are on Radio Public now, which is another... I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it's another... It's a Boston-based podcast app. Interesting. I'll so, that one up. Um, that's pretty neat. Um, so you can listen to us on a bunch of different things. And... Uh, we have one listener on each. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram. So that's Auto Off Topic. You can follow me on Instagram. Race and Anger. We'll be posting stuff from the Rally Sprint. There is good signal up there. Oh, I did a live video the other night. We're bleeding the brakes. Yes. And a bunch of people got in on that. Yeah, that was kind of cool. I watched that after the fact, unfortunately. Yeah. So, well, I don't know if you... Yeah, I guess you could watch it from your other account because you have access to the Auto Off Topic account. Yeah, I was watching it from my personal account. The and then ESI I'm not sure. SS3 it might be... Video. Since we're in the same studio when we record, um, it could be kind of fun to do a live video one night when we're doing recording, but maybe we'll do it during a question episode. I think we would do it when we have a guest more than anything else. Yeah, or, or, th- or things to show. Or a question episode. Like I'm talking about Tarmac, work, tarmac Works Diecast Cars. Yeah. I have yeah. Tarmac Works Diecast Cars. I think show. people would like that. So we're we're trying different things this year. We're trying to expand. 
Um, I do have an idea for another video um, to help with our YouTube page. I keep meaning to put the rest of our episodes up on the YouTubes. Oh, we get more regular in videos going on. In case there anyway, you want so. to listen to our podcast through YouTube. I don't know. Mm, neither do I. Hey, whatever. <laughs> Plenty of ways to listen to us, and we appreciate it. If you can't hear us, it's because you don't want to hear us. Right. Um, yeah, that's it. Where do you think they find you, Brad? Uh, my personal Instagram is uh, TSISS350. And that's it. All right. I'm calling that a podcast. Keep your cars analog and aim for the roses.